Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Top 10's Net, and in the video today, we're looking at the top 10 reasons we should be scared of Russia. Russia has been talked about a lot in the news in the last few years and has garnered a lot of media attention. They have been accused of hacking a political candidate's files in order to favor one over the other. They have been accused of blackmailing US politicians and planting their own agents. They have been accused of spreading a huge amount of fake news throughout the United States in order to change the course of the general election. On top of that, some believe that President Vladimir Putin was pushing for Brexit in order to weaken the EU because he would like to take back more of Eastern Europe. While it would be nice to consider this alarmism, he has already taken Crimea, the half of Ukraine, and doesn't seem interested in stopping anytime soon. So below are 10 reasons why we should keep a careful eye on Russia and their actions over the next several years. Number 10. They shut down Estonia's internet infrastructure for almost a month. Estonia is an Eastern European country near the Russian border, and they are actually quite unique when it comes to any country in the world. This is because they rely on the internet for almost everything. They use the internet for paying parking fines, voting, paying utility bills, and even paying their taxes, and almost anything else you could imagine doing. Children in Estonia are taught to use the internet properly in school, and they start at a young age, and Estonia is considered one of the most tech-savvy countries in the entire world. That's why in 2007, Estonians understandably freaked out when their internet infrastructure was hit by a cyber attack that managed to keep the entire system down for three whole weeks. Estonians are understandably worried that it was a test for a possible Russian invasion down the road. Estonia was once a part of the Soviet Union and is seeded with ethnic Russians, so Putin could attempt to pull something similar to what he did in Crimea, and with their infrastructure down, it would be hard for them to resist the chaos that Putin could create. With the recent aggressive moves by Russia in both terms of cybercrime and their continuing ventures in Ukraine, Estonia fears they may be next, and they are preparing for war. Number 9. The Russian mock invasion that would take key islands from Denmark, Finland, Norway, and Sweden. Some might think that Russia would never dare go that far into Eastern Europe or really keep pushing at all that much beyond Ukraine. However, people back during World War II said that Hitler would stop after he took the Rhinelands. And so oh, they were very, very wrong. The truth is that Putin has no reason to stop unless someone makes him he has already taken Crimea and roughly half of Ukraine. While some may be skeptical, back in March of 2015, Russia conducted a mock set of invasions that were set on the rather insane and clearly made up idea that the West was trying to physically overthrow Putin and pull off some kind of coup. In response to this fake threat, the test invasion conducted would have them take away key islands from Sweden, Norway, Denmark, and Finland, making it almost impossible for the NATO allies to come to the rescue. While the Russians tried to give some flimsy pretext that it was in response to a Western-based attack, that didn't really hold water, because the real strategic value of those islands is that it would cut off the Baltic states from NATO. This means that Russia would be able to easily take Estonia, Lithuania, and Latvia and force them back into the Soviet Union, and it would be almost impossible for NATO to provide any kind of proper support or help. The fact that Russia put so much time and effort into practicing such an attack is troubling to say the least. Number 8. With the EU increasingly weakening, Russia is in a stronger position to invade Eastern Europe. When the Brexit vote occurred, Putin tried to remain indifferent on the surface, but many experts believed he was very excited. The main thing that stops Putin from taking back the former Soviet states is a strong European Union and a strong NATO, which kind of coincide in a lot of ways right now. Unfortunately, both NATO and the European Union are in historically weak positions, and it seems that problem is only going to increase as time goes on. With the United Kingdom out of the EU, it is possible more people could leave, and it may be much harder for the Western Europeans to mount any kind of proper defensive support if Putin rolls into Eastern Europe. This also hurts the sanctions put on him by the United States and the European Union, as the sanctions are only as strong as the united front the countries performing them keep up against the Russians. If the European Union continues to dissolve, Russia will have more negotiating power with individual states and will find it easy to bully small European countries with their comparative relatively large economy. In the end, both in terms of potential invasions and in terms of negotiating power, the Russians win big whenever Europe becomes weaker. To make matters worse for Eastern Europeans, there's a new US president who knows little about NATO and has campaigned in part on it being obsolete, though it seems he's finally coming around on its importance. He's also been shown to care little about agreements that are in place to keep small countries safe. Number 7. Russia today is Kremlin-controlled, and Russian fake news propaganda is a global machine. 
Putin tries to dance around the issue, so it isn't quite as obvious to everyone, but the truth is that Russia Today might as well be President Putin's personal blog. It is funded, owned, and operated by the Kremlin, in other words, the Russian government. The government claims that it is not totally government controlled, but Putin also admits that it should be kind of expected that they will say things that are positive about the government and its agenda. While not saying it outright, it is clear that the purpose of Russia Today is simply to spread the Kremlin's propaganda all over the world. It is perhaps one of the most unreliable news sources on the planet, but many people who see Russia Today in other countries do not realize just how unreliable it is. To make matters worse, a lot of fake news regarding the US election was traced right back to Russia, and there is reason to believe many of them were even paid trolls. Despite America's best efforts to handle its own elections, it is scary to think how easily the Russians have managed to manipulate emotions and decisions simply by posting fake stories. If that wasn't enough, there is reason to believe that a lot of similar propaganda is being spread in Europe as well in order to weaken support for the European Union and bolster the image of Vladimir Putin around the world. Number 6. We might call Vladimir Putin a tyrant, but he's extremely popular in Russia. Putin may be a man who is very interested in conquest, and he has some very grand plans. For this reason, many people like to put him in the realm of comic book villain and look at him as a truly evil individual. While he does support a lot of draconian laws, especially against gay people, the truth is that Russia has always had very fascist laws and very little freedom. The Russian people are fairly used to hardship, rationing, and not having a particularly strong say in the government. When it comes to being a fascist, if anything, Putin is lenient compared to some of the leaders of the past. Which means that while he is dangerous to us, when we act as if he is horrible to the Russian people and posit the possibility of them one day rising up against him, it shows a fundamental lack of our understanding of Russian rivals. We assume that they have the same priorities we do, but they simply don't. Americans and other Western countries are more concerned with individual freedoms and don't particularly care about refighting old battles. However, when Putin took back Crimea, it came with a great surge of popularity back home because he was bringing back a certain amount of Russian pride as well. The Russian people felt stronger and better to know that Putin was bringing back the old Soviet Union. Many of them now see him not as another politician, but as a transformational figure that has helped bring Russia back to what it once was. Russians do complain about politics in the country, but Putin still has approval in the low 80s, and even watchdogs from other countries believe that most polls are at least mostly accurate. We aren't saying that Putin is a nice guy, but it is important to understand the people you are up against. We may not like Putin, but the fact that he's popular at home isn't just Russian propaganda. Number 5. Putin has consolidated power and may very well be president for life. One of the things that makes it harder for Europe or the United States to deal with threats from a dictator is that the dictator has the advantage of remaining in power forever, consolidating his holdings, making him capable of carrying out truly long-term plans. On the other hand, countries like the USA have regular elections that change the governmental leaders, which means we have to constantly be refreshing our policies to deal with the latest threats. Every president will have a different idea of how to deal with our foreign enemies or rivals and that means an entirely new roadmap. In the meantime, someone like Putin can remain in office for nearly two decades, ensuring he can slowly work on his goals. Putin was first term limited, then made a new position for himself that was above the president to get that problem out of the way. Then he managed to become president again after taking care of the pesky term limit issue. And while he hasn't said he will run yet, many expect him to run again next year, and with his popularity, it would be hard for him to lose unless something catastrophic happens to Russia to completely tank his poll numbers. And with calls for some within the Russian government for Vladimir Putin to remain president for life, it seems clear that this has been the plan for quite some time now. Number 4. There's the possibility they have blackmail material on the US president. While we know that Donald Trump has business dealings in Russia, which have been the subject of much suspicion and rumor, and that many in his campaign were said to have contacted Russia during the campaign, this has led to some to believe that there is far more to the story. According to a dossier, which has information, much of which is hard to verify, Trump visited Russia as part of a beauty pageant, and while staying in a hotel room, he got up to some antics that were quite risque and embarrassing. He allegedly had prostitutes pee on a hotel bed that had once been used by Barack and Michelle Obama. And according to the dossier, the Russians had been monitoring this room and now have incredible dirt on Trump. 
Due to his many business dealings with them, and this blackmail material they had, they decided to push him towards politics, and did their best to help him succeed, because they believed that they could use their blackmail material to get sanctions lifted or other pro-Russia policies put in place. Of course, there is no proof that this blackmail material exists, or that the event even occurred as alleged, but the thought that they have blackmail on the president is very troubling. And even if they do not have that kind of blackmail, the fact that he once admitted to having a large amount of business dealings with Russia and would not disclose his taxes still makes things suspicious for other reasons. Number 3. The Gay Concentration Camps Currently Operating in Chechnya, Part of Russia Right now in Chechnya, a region which is now part of the Russian Federation, gay people are being rounded up like dangerous animals and either tortured for days on end or killed. These men are being held in what are essentially being described as concentration camps for gay people. Bounties are being paid for gangs of mercenaries to round up gay men wherever they can find them. This includes their homes, secret gay hangout spots, and they will even perform sting operations to find gay people. There are reports that they are receiving beatings and electric shocks and are sometimes even being released simply so they can be re caught for sport, and so that the hunter can double dip on the bounty for the captured gay person. Some are tortured, some are threatened with death, and extorted for large sums of money. Because being gay is illegal in Chechnya, these men are all too eager to avoid even worse punishment. Unfortunately, the only group that really has the power to stop this is the Russian government, and they are denying that there is any purge going on. Considering their knowledge of what happens in their territories, it boggles the minds that they do not know. And when you look at their reputation when it comes to gay people, the sad truth is that the Kremlin likely understands what is happening and approves of it. Gay people are not welcome in Russia. Number 2. Russia currently has the largest active nuclear stockpile in the world. When most people think of the most powerful nuclear country, they tend to immediately think of the United States. But the truth is that Russia actually has a slightly larger stockpile of nuclear weapons than the US does. This includes both stockpiled warheads and those that are fully operational and ready to go. The United States has close to 7,000 nuclear warheads, but Russia has over 7,000, beating the US by a small margin. They also have about 40 more active nuclear warheads than America does, with both countries having close to 2,000 that they are ready to launch. Some may think that China is close, but they don't actually have any operational warheads at the moment. The next closest countries are actually France with a few hundred and the United Kingdom with a little over 100 in terms of operational nuclear weapons. For this reason alone, Russia has to be respected. With one of the largest economies, area of sheer territory, and that many nuclear weapons, they are a very strong force to be reckoned with. A ground invasion of Russia has already proven to be all but impossible, and a serious air battle would lead to them threatening nukes against the United States. In the meantime, it's hard to prevent Russia from taking back countries in Eastern Europe without starting some kind of full-blown war or threatening the use of nuclear weapons, an empty threat, because we know Russia could respond in kind. Due to being such a strong nuclear power, apart from fighting proxy wars over the ground Russia is trying to occupy, there isn't a lot that we can do to slow them down. Number 1. Military service is compulsory for young men, so nearly all Russian males have military experience. The Russians are also dangerous because nearly every male of any decent health has at least a few years of military service under his belt. The Russians have made it compulsory for young men between the ages of 18 and 27 to serve in the military. This means that every capable citizen will be ready if necessary, and also it keeps the military strong, full, and well-disciplined at all times. Now, draft dodging is fairly common for this reason, as not everyone wants to join the military, but it can actually be quite hard to do. Without a legitimate medical reason, you often need to pay thousands of dollars for fake documents to forge your way out of it. And you might still be caught and forced into service anyways, especially if you try tricks like staying at a different address than the one you put down officially. And despite the draft dodgers, this means that Russia still has a very, very large portion of its healthy young men learning the ways of the military lifestyle and how to fight and die for their country if needed. Needed. With a percentage of men with military training much higher than that of other countries, they have a very large pool of capable people to pull from if they end up in any extended wars or conflicts that spread throughout the world. Some countries like Sweden have recently added compulsory military service in order to prepare for the potential threat that they see coming down the road. The world has to be very watchful of Russia and those who live in Eastern Europe. They have the most to fear. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already for brand new videos just like this every day of the week. Also, over there on the right, a couple of other videos that you might enjoy if you enjoyed this one. And thank you for watching.